Hopefully I've got it fixed this time. Maybe. Hopefully. Let's open up Facebook and find out. Ah, sweet. Okay. I am now live on all platforms. Facebook was being weird. And uh, so, yeah, there you go. Sleeping kitty over there. She's just hanging out. All right, so I was working on this um, commission. Is a um, Godzilla inspired lightsaber, and he had some requests. Um, I already did one fix. Um, the mouth used to be bigger. Um, it used to be about that big, and he wanted the mouth the mouth area a little bit smaller. So I I took that down, but kept the same length on it. I liked the length, so I just made that smaller, and and now it looks a lot more consistent. I actually do like that um, a lot better. Um, also asking about two extra rows of spines next to the middle one. Um, and make them try to make them uh, light up and flash a little before it completely turns on. So I, I did model these separately from the rest of the body. So it should be pretty easy to just make an, another design and kind of tilt it off to each side, and then and then make this where uh, where it's got a place for it to like stick in, so that he can print those separately. So we're we're going to see if we can work this out. Um, I don't think I don't think it'll take too long. So first thing I need to do is uh, this body and this body are not combined. So I probably need to do that. Put those two together. It's gonna screw up our colors for a minute, but it's not a big deal. Turn the blade off. And then put those two back together. Yeah, I separated that ring from the emitter so I could scale the the mouth down without affecting the the ring that goes next to it. So, but yeah, this was this was the concept. Um, the The drawing was pretty rough. <laughs> it's just kind of like some ideas that I wanted to get you know down on paper to kind of figure out what the what the structure was gonna look like. The 3D model looks way, way better. Um, building the scales was interesting. I built one scale, uh, tilted it just a tiny bit, and then repeated it a whole bunch of times, and then rotated it, and and uh, and made that. And then on the underside here, I made kind of like those belly scales, like you'd see on like snakes and stuff. So a lot of rep reptile, um, you know, inspiration there. And then of course the spines, directly inspired from Godzilla's shape. So, hi Ben, good to see you. Thanks for tuning in, kind of working on this thing, um, figuring out what to do next. I feel like something needs to go here. Like I need to do something more with this area here. I'm not sure exactly what. I don't know if I need to put like just more scales around that, but that seems like it'd be too busy. Like. I don't know or maybe, or maybe it's fine the way it is maybe I can or maybe I need to like chamfer it or fill it fill it those edges so it's a little bit softer around those edges yeah maybe maybe a fillet's gonna work here I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that I'm gonna try a fillet see if that uh, see if that works Okay, well, it, it turned a weird color because of the um, the texture appearance. So what we're probably going to do is we'll just make that more consistent. There we go. The blade needs to be fire. <laughs> you know, well, his his nuclear breath is kind of a kind of a, a blue color. So, like, if if you used like a 
a Kylo Ren blade, but then, you know, um, but where the Kylo Ren blade, uh, you know, cause it, cause it like looks all rough and stuff, but then do blue instead of, um, instead of red. Oh, I can, I can make it really smooth. So it's just kind of like an indentation as opposed to a hard line. Maybe, maybe that'll be better. Kind of modify the appearance again. There we go. All right, let's flip this back around. Okay, so I need to, I need to make another thing like this, but not exactly this, um, uh, so I can have you know kind of an alternate design. So let me pull a, an image of Godzilla's spine here. Cause it's like, it's like almost fractal looking kind of. Yeah. It's basically this shape just, you know, there's a lot of different things going on with it. Um, so yeah, I think maybe I could just like kind of sketch something out random and um, take it from there. So we're we're gonna sketch it on this plane, look through it on this plane, and then we'll we'll rotate it where where I need it. Um, that way I'm not trying to draw on a weird axis. And I can kind of compare the two profiles together. <laughs> well, I'm doing this for a commission. Somebody's paying me to do this specifically, this concept. Um, so. You know, I, I don't know if Trogdor's in the future, but let me get a, a line going here. You know what, let's get rid of that. And I guess if I just follow the length of this guy, then that's easy enough. Make it about the same size. or width, I mean, and like the height that it sits at, that makes sense. <laughs> Burninating all of the people. All right, so thinking Go Oh, I don't want to go I don't want to go taller than what I've already got, so Need to keep that somewhat limited. Let's go this way. And then maybe like this. Does that look weird? And then we'll go. All right, so that's a solid shape. That could work. Kind of feel like this needs to be wider. You 
yeah that looks kind of like a cool shape and then I'll make yet another one uh, to flip on the other side so I just need um, I did this these extra pieces for like extra texture there maybe I'll remove those those little pieces and just have like three main spines maybe or, or maybe this is good maybe I like that I don't know well let's let's go with this and let's um, make the inside pieces but, uh, simplified not really like an offset or anything just kind of simplified from where it was different shape but just like less points I guess I don't know cool all right so we'll get rid of that and we'll let's say I think I did three millimeters before yep cool Side from this object this way. There we go. And one more time. This side. Or actually, you know what? It probably would have been easier had I on this first feature. We'll go one sided. And then we can just mirror this thing. After I chamfer. So now it would probably be easier if I just grab the face. Oh, but I didn't want to champ for the bottom. Damn it. Hi, Izzy. <laughs> I I am no king. Oh, Mothra would be super cool too. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure what the um, what he's gonna ask for next on the commission, but he he just said kaiju, and he was gonna start with Godzilla. So so Mothra might come up at some point. Like I I I might have to figure that out at some point. Nope, it doesn't want to go that far. What did I do last time? Did I do a point five. I don't even want to do a point five. What's going on here? Okay, what did I do for the other one? No, not that. Come on. From here to here, what is that? Okay, so it is one millimeter. And it looks like the chamfer is half of that. All right. Maybe it's because these are connected or something. I'm going to try and get rid of that. Keep them separate and then maybe it'll go better. There we go.
<laughs> yes, Mario, a Godzilla lightsaber. Ah, yes. Godzilla being king of the monsters that is... Hey, what the hell? Oh, it's just... It was just... Disappeared. All right, point 0.5. Huzzah, it worked that time. Yeah, I guess it was because those vertices were connected that it was being weird. Yeah, okay, so for those that just joined in, I'll turn those off, and then I'll find where everything is. Nope, that's not it. There it is. name that one so I don't lose it again. There's a bunch of extra parts that are like just kind of like hanging out um, on my list because because I, I had a lot of like splicing to do with the with the scale sections. Mechagodzilla or Biolanti, but I don't know how to say that one. Um, that would be cool too. Um, I was also thinking like Ghidorah would be super cool, like multiple blades or something like that. That could be cool. So, all right. So let's figure out these extra spines here. We're going to go combine those together and then mirror this guy. And then we're going to rotate this. All right, let's turn on the original spines so we can see how far we need to go here. So like 15 degrees would be just just off a little bit and maybe maybe far enough apart but i'm almost thinking maybe or maybe 18 18 degrees because that's divisible into 360. oh yeah the the um the picture texture on those is uh leather because <laughs> i thought that would look cool but in the in the renders it, it looks really pretty. Come on, open up here. I think actually I think I saved it somewhere. Nope, that's not it. I could have swore I saved oh wait, you know what? I think I know where I put it. So I made, yep, I made a folder for these. Now this was a render on on how that on how that texture kind of looks and turns out on that. Um, I'm not sure exactly which way he's going with um, with the building of, of this piece. Um, uh, apparently, he wants to make and sell these, so he's probably looking to. Uh, mold and cast pieces and he was talking about uh, making the spines light up and and so I, I need to make sure I model them separately and then make it where they can be inserted um, into parts of it so all right so now I just need to sketch another set of spines to go on this side of it I'm almost thinking maybe I should have gone smaller on this set like make the, the middle one the biggest one and then make the side ones slightly smaller. I think I can fix that. If I just grab some of these and we just pull it down. Same general shape, just not as tall.
There we go. You know, that's a great question. Um, a question that I'm gonna let the maker answer because <laughs> cause I have no idea. Um, so in, in working on as many lightsaber um, designs as I have, it's it's become quite apparent that practicality um, and and combat um, practicality of these sabers is not super important. Um, the the look of them ten, tends to to seem a lot more important than than the actual practicality of of how how they could potentially work. So not terribly concerned about it. Um, I feel like these, you know, if it's for display, then having something that that you can hold without stabbing yourself, <laughs> probably not super important. Oh yes, they definitely would. Um, that it's why I was trying to like keep the spines to a minimum, but but he wanted more and more spines, and on the um, on the sleeve area. Oh, you know what? I'm missing one. Where are you? There you are. I also have this little, you know, this little grippy spine right there, but that one's a lot more low profile and probably wouldn't obstruct your, your grip too much. Um, I imagine with this particular kind of hilt, this, this would go one-handed for most of the time. And if you put your second hand on there, your second hand's going to go on the pommel part um, to assist with, with aiming things no godzilla sith cosplay <laughs> not that i know of not for me anyways i kind of feel like this one's pointing this way and then these are pointing that way and now that's bothering me and i i feel like i need to um i feel like i need to round this out where it's pointing more up instead of out that way you know and give it a little bit more let's see where's where is that sketch let's find it there you are we're gonna name that one in case i need to come back to it Um, so I'm gonna pull this this way. Yeah, there we go. Just those two little points. Well, th this one I already kind of had in process. Um, this this is more of uh, kind of updates and and refining on on this particular model um, because it's just what I was working on and I kind of need to work on it because it needs to get done soon. Um, the the person commissioning it wants to make, he wants the inside to be large enough to hold a saber forge kit. Um, so, so this is more just like the chassis that he's gonna build around an existing uh, lightsaber kit so that he can sell like a complete finished um you know godzilla saber so all right i think i'm at a point where i can or i'm happy enough with that where i can uh go ahead and make the third set of spines here all right so let's we'll get rid of that for now and that okay and that not that we need that not that there we go uh, doesn't have to be exact there we go okay so now i need something different than both these Let's go. What 
definitely shorter. Maybe slightly less points. Yeah, let's just go like that. Yeah, that works. <laughs> Next is King Kong. This is that you could have Kong versus Godzilla lightsaber duel. All right, now I can get rid of those so I can just concentrate on making the second set for texture. There we go. All right, let's turn this on. Make sure make sure things are looking the way they're supposed to. I want it to overlap like right there. There we go. That looks pretty good. All right, so let's go 1.5. And then Go from, oh, come on. This profile and this profile. Okay, it's being weird, hang on. This and this. Why does it keep going from object? That's not what I want. There we go. Okay. Then if I turn this back on, we'll go from object from here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Izzy. <laughs> Good luck with your bumblebee wings. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see how far we get as far as like how long this takes. Um, we'll probably jump into another project. I'm just not sure what that is yet. I couldn't really decide what to do like new. So I was like, well, I guess I guess I could just, you know, um, work on my commission because that's just what I'm working on. Rotate. Oh, come on. And this, and we need to go this way, minus 18. All right, so three sets of spines all set 18 degrees apart. Let's bring some of these other parts back in. Let's see what we got going on. All right, so if he wants them to light up, then let's go in and let's make these. Make them transparent. And then when we hollow out the middle here, 
Um, then we can show how those uh, light up by pushing the blade back back into there a little bit uh, a little bit farther. So actually, before before I get into that, why don't we? I'm actually going to remove most of the textures here. Gonna be much easier to work without all those colors and textures in the way. Now is a good time to save. Okay. So, lots of spines now. Kind of a cool random set there. Oh yes, gotta gotta do the hustle. All right, so we're gonna call this spine two and spine three. Let me get rid of those two. Oh, and this is sleeve spine. All right, and to keep things organized, I'm going to move all the things that I don't need into a separate group folder. OK. So I need to basically, I need to cut this off at this height and and then re-extrude that down so, so it's like straight so that I can cut in cut into this part so if I just grab the extrude tool and grab that I think I can push this up here I know what we need to do we need to go hidden edges. There we go. Oh, there's his pommel. I was like, where's the pommel? Oh my god. Okay, I think I need to go... Just a little bit higher. So right about there is probably good. We can go point one. To just clear it. Yep, okay. All right, so now when I grab this, I pull down. Okay, yeah, so then it makes it straight. So I can go two millimeters down and create that nice flat profile and then create a sketch on the bottom of it and then just push it out 0.5 
I'm not sure why fusion keeps like automatically like going to a distance for some reason. That's really weird. All right, so. This shows us exactly where that piece is going to fit. Ooh, that might be way too close. It might be fine. It's point one. Yeah. Yeah, since since it's since you would print it vertically, then a point one gap is not, not a big deal. So if I turn spines back on, we can see this little gap around it so that it fits nicely. Could probably go in, let's actually take the, let's go 0.15. Because that's, that's plenty of room in most of my other models, so. Okay, so now I basically just have to do the same thing with these other ones. Extrude up and then, and then extrude back down so that it, uh, so it's got a nice straight whatever to it. Okay, so this I get to go up quite a ways. All right, that's probably a little too far. Let's go 2.4. Nope, all right, so yeah, it's gotta be 2.5 because it has, to, it has to clear this. All right, so cutting, but we're only cutting the spine part. So it's just kind of floating above there. Might have to adjust my my drawing there because that's not quite what I want. I'll just go a little bit higher on those. There we go. That's a much better piece. Okay. And then we did two millimeters. Well, I guess it's trying, it's, it's remembering the amount that I do from the last extrusion. I guess that's what it's doing. It didn't used to do that. They must have updated it. I mean, I guess that's useful if you're, if you have repetitive stuff that you're doing, but for some of the stuff that I do, that's, a little annoying. Yeah, see, it's it's pushing pushing two millimeters, which I had just entered from the other part. So, all right. And since each of these has a unique profile, then each uh, spine will only fit um, precisely where it's supposed to. So, so they, they can't get it mixed up. These are one millimeter apart. So that is a nice minimum distance. I could probably spread them out a little bit more. Like on the rotation, I could, could go a little bit farther, I suppose. So that they're spread out a little bit more. But then on Godzilla's back, they're kind of tightly packed together. So it makes sense to keep it all kind of like together. All right, let's get this spine number three going here. Yeah, see, it's going two millimeters that way instead of cutting in. 
Yeah, it's it's just remembering the last thing I did. There it is. Okay, I think this is the minimum for it to kind of float above there. If I remember right, if we go to 2.4, then some of the scales are overlapping somewhere. Oh, yep, there they are. Okay, grab this, go to There we go. All right, and then to make these guys light up, I just have to um, do another offset sketch, um, but smaller, so that when the spine is inserted, then it like has something to sit on, but then it's empty underneath so that the light can come out. So probably should have done both offsets at the same time. Probably would have been easier, but yeah, what can you do? All right, so we're gonna go minus a half millimeter. We're gonna go minus one. One millimeter is probably fine. Because then these areas should still be one. Yep. Okay. So if I go minus 0.75 then that should give me one and a half through there that's I feel like that's better grab this middle one all right not sure how deep we have to go in order for everything to like to cut all the way through because I'm, I'm not sure how like how much uh how much room the the kit needs um and i'm not going to hollow it out until until i know so i'm just going to kind of put all this in place and then and then when i find that out then i can kind of go from there I still haven't received the specifications on the lightsaber kit that is supposed to be occupying the inside of this chassis. So until I get that, it's kind of hard to just guess at measurements and stuff. All right. Went four on the other side. Yeah, we'll do that. Just for rendering purposes, I'll, I'll probably like, you know, hollow it out real quick because I can always adjust that later with the sketches. Okay, there's the last one. That's weird, why didn't it grab the whole thing? Okay, very weird. All right, we'll just uh, we'll make a new one. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with that. There we go. There we go. Now we got those 
three holes with the spines on top and they'll sit right in there, no problem. All right, um, not sure what connection system I'm gonna use for this. Um, it probably won't be my standard system. So for now, let's just make a um, 32 millimeter hole straight through the middle. And we cut all the way through on those, so that's good. That's got a hole there, so that works. Sleeve doesn't matter. Oh, I need to make that one fit. I need to make our button fit. But I don't want to. I don't want to make the button permanent until I know more about this kit and how it's all going to come together. So, all right. So let's make that fit. Save that real quick. Just like the other one, I'm going to make this where it just barely floats above everything. Probably make sure that it's gonna miss both sides. It's a little bit long. So let's go find that one wherever it ended up. Where'd it go? Is it that one? It is that one. Okay. Actually, you know what? It's probably going to be easier to scale this puppy. Just want to go that way. 0.9. Let's see what we did. Oh, that was probably a little too much. <laughs> Oh, like nine five. There we go. That is plenty close to both sides with some room to spare. All right. Offset 0.15. Oh, thanks, Chris. <laughs> yeah, this is um, a very interesting commission project. That I've been working on. I'll, uh, I'll get I'll get all the layers turned on here in a second to show you. Turn that off, pull this up. Here we go. Punch that hole out. And then, not sure if they're going to want to make these glow, but I might as well put that there just in case. And we'll go, we'll go through the middle of this one too even though I'm not sure exactly how much room is needed inside the chassis. 
we'll just we'll experiment and then I can adjust measurements as as I go. There we go. There's the whole thing. All right, so this pretty much covers the change requests from the commissioner. So I'm gonna texture this. We're gonna do some renders. We're gonna see if we can make the spines glow and what that looks like. And um, and being that it's only 10 o'clock, we'll probably see if we can jump into another project of some kind. So I was using dark gray there it is for most of these parts or well actually no I don't don't want to do that because I need those to be transparent or like a transparent blue color but I did use Did use it for these bodies and then we've got ah dang it Try that again. See if I can get to select just the parts that I want. And it selected all of it. That's not what I wanted. I don't like having to pick every individual face, but if that's what you gotta do, that's what you gotta do, I guess. I don't know. I know technically, like, I should probably like pick some like super dark green for the scales, but it, it was way easier to just go like dark gray. Because I, I, I think he's supposed to be green, but the the default green texture in uh, in Fusion is like very very green, um, and because and it's image based, so I couldn't couldn't edit the um the color of that texture so so we're just going with something that looks dark and sort of natural Grab this. Come on, get in there. There we go. Okay. And then I need that. And then I had A bone texture that I used for some stuff before so that makes that easy probably not the right color for like the for his teeth and stuff but we're just going for an approximation at the moment okay so now I need some kind of blue um could go glass or it could go a translucent plastic maybe that's what we need to do translucent or transparent transparent probably is better oh, they don't have like a, a blue transparent 
maybe they do and I just don't know. Let's open this one up. Oh, we can color it. Okay, cool. So if I push this to blue and push that over, yep, there we go. Now I've got that kind of blue cyan kind of color. There we go. Why isn't it grabbing that one? All right, what the heck, man? That's weird. Maybe if we go to the render space. It's still just not accepting of that. Not of that either. Is it just not going to take any color? What the hell? Technically green of all kinds of shades mixed with browns and tans, depending on what era you're referencing. The black red is the color of Shin Godzilla, personal favorite. That's pretty cool. I really want that to have a color. You know what, we're gonna save it, and we're gonna close it, and we're gonna reopen it, because sometimes that works. close this guy down and then reopen him sometimes that works for these weird appearance things all right haha -ha. it worked it's so weird that, that works All right, so I'm going to take all that out. I'm going to grab this and bring that basically all the way through. So that there's a, a light source along the inside. I have no idea what this is going to do. I'm hoping it works. Let's see what the in-canvas render does. Oh wow. <laughs> it's it's edge lighting the acrylics just like it would in in real like oh man that looks freaking killer. Okay. Um I I oversized it a little bit. I mean Godzilla is kind of a thick boy anyway. Um but I also oversized it because because this is meant to be a chassis for an existing kit. Um, I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room to play with and, you know, scaling down is going to be um, a little bit easier than, than trying to scale up in my opinion. So, but yeah, let's um, get this. Let's do a quick render of this. It doesn't have to be a big image. I want to see how that turns out. Oh, thanks, Larry. The cat is totally passed out. Okay, so apparently that's going to take a minute. Let me close that stuff. Maybe if I close Chrome, preserve some RAM, maybe that'll help me. Oh, I bet it's the light effects. The the lighting effects are probably what's like um, making it take so long. 
So on other news, I finished every, or I, I like packaged the files for every single Fallen Order Saber. So now I just have to work on the, what CG Trader calls the collection file, um, where you can select a whole bunch of your models and then it makes a new listing that is a collection of all those uh, files automatically, which is supposed to be like really convenient. Um, and, and it is for the most part, but in order to rank in the search results, collections are pretty terrible for ranking in search results. So I have to basically re-upload all the renders and images for everything that's in the collection and and then like copy paste all the descriptions from all of the individual things into the collection description and stuff because it's a brand new listing and it doesn't really connect the other listings it's just it just like grabs the files the source files so so that's really the only convenient part about it um so i'm still working on that but uh because of the distance of the two camera views on you and Cricket, it looks like you're reaching super far away to pet the cat, a la Reed Richards. I mean, maybe maybe I am Mr. Fantastic, you know, just... <laughs> Hi, Cricket. Yeah, are you tired? I'm sorry. You can go back to sleep. But yeah, that does that does look weird, doesn't it? Because I can just go. <laughs> I didn't even think. I didn't even think about that. Like I could, you know, if if I put her up here, right, and then I reach, I go like this. <laughs> now it actually looks like my arm. <laughs> My arm is reaching across. What? What? That's so dumb. And yet I find it so entertaining. <laughs> okay. Oh man, that looks so friggin cool. Here, let's download this. Cause I, I can't really zoom on on the on that thing, but we can on this. That's pretty cool. I'm I'm kinda wondering if if he's gonna want like different parts in the spines like like you know split the middle out of it so that you print like so that you can you know so you have uh the transparent part and then like sheathed around the outside the the opaque part so it's only edge lit because i mean this looks cool and everything but but i'm wondering i'm wondering which direction he wants to go with it um like splitting the middle out of it I think I've got one millimeter there. Let's let's go back to the design space. Yeah, one one millimeter on either side of the chamfer. So so if I wanted to, I I could like. You know, put opaque uh, sides around around the outside of it, and then. Um, and see what that looks like. I think, you know, Godzilla's real stuff, it would be like kind of this organic, like veiny looking glowing parts. And um, that would take a, a lot more time and effort than the, than what was initially requested. So we're, we're going to show him a version like that. And then I think I ought to take another, another render where they are matte. And more organic looking. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> or, or I could fix it logically. Just put put her all the way over here. So that I could be like... Oh, but now, <laughs> now my arm looks way too short. She's got to be like here. For it to look like it makes sense. Oh, there we go. Yeah, see, now it looks believable. Like, this is just where, where she would exist in space. <laughs> T-Rex arms, yeah. <laughs> I think having glowing parts is a really cool idea. Um, I just don't know exactly what he wants to do there. Like, I could take these side pieces and make those opaque and then make the main part like the big part glowy we, we could try that too why don't we try that so i gotta go back into design space and we're going to turn everything off except for our spines because we've got to split these Fortunately, splitting them is very, very easy. Because then I can just go back to this, put that on the middle one, and then it's got, yeah. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay, let's turn those off. And it all still fits like where it already fit because it's just, it's a, you know, it's a slice. All right, let's go that way with it. Hang on a minute. Split this body. Split it. Oh. Because there's a little weird curve in there. That's okay. Then split this by this. Oops. It didn't want to do that. Compute failed. Okay. But why? with this nope it didn't want to do that either what the hell man how strange is it because they're rotated funny I don't think that's it split this by this you know what I could probably do is make an offset construction plane and, and I think that'll work better. There we go. Alright, so there's spine three. We just need spine two. So we're gonna do an offset plane in this way and this way. And split body by that plane. It's gonna work. Hey, it worked. Split this body by this plane. Cool. Okay. So then grab this, throw that back on there. rid of those there we go now now we have some opaque pieces kind of sitting on the inside there I'm also wondering maybe I should go into this Give it a little bit more color so it doesn't look as clear. Still a very light blue, but just more saturated. Do a quick in canvas render to see how that's going to turn out. Okay, yeah, so with, with those extra um, 
body pieces around the outsides of those. That kind of looks interesting. We'll show show him that as an option as well. See what see what he wants to do. Let's look at how the regular one turned out. Pretty regular. Yeah, not terribly, not as exciting as the glowing one, but still pretty cool looking in my opinion. Um, I'm, I'm gonna guess and say that he's gonna want like another set, like a triple set of spines on the sleeve part as well. Um, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be surprised if, if I was asked for that as far as uh, changes go. Um, this actually wasn't a terribly involved design. Um, doing the repeating scales and stuff was a lot easier than, than I thought it was going to be. One, once I created one scale, then just repeating and overlapping it a bunch of times and combining that um, turned out to be pretty easy. Um, my first instinct was to make a scale pattern and then like try to emboss that um, but I thought maybe it looked better as like three-dimensional scales as opposed to like an impression and I, I think that turned out better looking at this design this could also be the Night King's lightsaber yeah yeah I could see that Like the pommel maybe would be different. Maybe something that looks more like glacial and kind of spiky. You know? Like that's that's kinda of what I think when I when I think of the Night King is is um like kind of mountainous organic, like rocky, glacial, um with overlapping spikes. And I guess that's why why the spine kind of like is reminiscent of, of those kind of shapes, but I'm never going to get tired of that. <laughs> yeah for sure and you know it was it was always interesting to me that that darth maul's saber was not like more spiky and evil looking it was um like I, I, there's there's plenty of people that love the design like and the design is cool but at the same time it's like it could have had more to it like more it could have been like more sith inspired didn't feel super sith inspired Oh, what did I do? Oh, crap. Oh, the browser got stuck. Okay. Come on, reattach. Damn it. I'll figure that out later. I just wanted to make this window bigger. There we go. All right, so apparently that's as big as the image it's going to give us. But that, that looks pretty cool. I like that. I like that a lot. Okay. Let's go back to our design space and save. And this is going to get shelved for a bit until I get more feedback. So we're going to put this down. I have to dress as Reed Richards in a future video. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to wait until Fantastic Four is in the MCU and we see the MCU suits. And and then maybe. I I would love to see a Reed Richards that, you know, is is a little bit, you know, has, has the whole beard thing going on. Because I think in most of his depictions he's he's clean shaven, but I, I I like I like the, you know I like the Reed Richards that's got a little bit of the gray and the, and uh, and the beard going on. 
reset to default layout. There we go. All right. The Roger Corman versions were lit. I'm not not 100% familiar there. Okay, so we've got some lightsabers that just need attention as far as like rendering and stuff. That stuff's kind of boring, so I'm not uh, I'm not sure that we want to do that. Um, but what is a lightsaber that we haven't worked on yet? Let's. Um, Let's go to the book. Oh, there it is. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, <laughs> yeah, the direct -to video one that nobody can find. I've, I've heard of that. I have heard of it. Okay. Um. We have not recreated the Ahsoka Tano sabers. Um, Depa Balaba, 30, page 34. Um, this Jedi... Oh, she was on the Jedi Council. And... Oh, right, she was, she was the master for uh, Kanan. When he was called Caleb. Her saber is really simple. I'd be able to knock this out like really fast. And this, this would make another great um, addition to the prequel collection. Um, since I did the Darth Maul and all the Geonosis sabers. Um, Jedi Master Sindralig. Commands the Temple Guard. Oh, okay. Um, portrayed in Star Wars Episode Three by Nick uh, Nick Gillard, who is the uh, the lightsaber stunt coordinator guy. John Krasinski would be insanely cool as Mr. Fantastic, and I've I think I feel like I've seen some fan art of that. So that's another good. He'd be another good prequel. Evan Piel, who's that? Yeah, all these prequel sabers are so straight, like all the Clone Wars ones. Um, oh, okay, yeah. Evan Peel. I don't know how to say that one. He, he's the one that kind of looks like Yoda, but is not Yoda. Um, he was in the Clone Wars. Got the really big ears and messed up eye, but he's got a little short saber. Jocasta knew we already did. Um, Jedi Temple Guard Saber. Oh yeah, the Jedi Temple Guard Saber is the one that hinges in the middle, kind of similar to um, the the Dark Side Ray concept um, that like hinges in the middle. That would be another pre prequel one. Um, I feel like maybe. Maybe I do need to do some more prequel ones and then have like a big, big prequel collection of sabers. Lord Corvax, that's a really interesting looking saber. It's got a spiral on the end of it and stuff. Um, it, is, it appears in the Star Wars virtual reality series, uh, Vader Immortal. Um, exploration of the sanctum beneath Vader's fortress on Mustafar and the reveal of a legendary blade. This light sword was forged long ago by the, by the power mad Lady Corvax and her husband, the Black Bishop. We're calling it the Proto Saber, explained Vader Immortal writer David S. Goyer during his during previews for Secrets of the Empire, a team-based VR experience. The idea is it's kind of a prototype of a lightsaber and it may find its way into other mediums in the Star Wars universe. Um, yeah, it's super ornate.
very very interesting the um oh okay yeah so the way it's constructed the crystals like held out in the middle of nowhere and then a beam of energy hits it and then the blade like gets bigger where the crystal is that'd be very hard to construct physically i think it's kind of a cool concept but man is that involved and really niche Yeah, yeah, that's the picture I saw of John Krasinski as Reed Richards as super cool. Um, Pong Krell, another Clone Wars. Quinlan Voss, Clone Wars. Sifo-Dyas, another Clone Wars one. Lots, lots of Clone Wars ones that I could get into. So I, I guess, I guess I'm gonna end up doing Clone Wars stuff at some point because that's that's kind of where it's going. The Sifo-Dyas saber is really interesting. It's got a lot of extra like shroud pieces on the outside of it. Terra Sinube. Who's Terra Sinube? I don't know that one. Oh, okay. This is the the weird kind of. It's the jet the old Jedi Master that has like a beak and go. Um, he was in lightsaber lost with Ahsoka Tano whenever she lost her lightsaber and he has like this cane and the handle of the cane uh, uh, splits into two and that's where his lightsaber is it's kind of an interesting project training lightsaber ancient cross guard saber Oh, okay. The ancient crossguard saber is something that's found by Ezra Bridger. Um, it's a really simple design, very reminiscent of a lot of the other um, other designs that we've already done, um, but probably more compatible as far as like the how how the um, crossguard part is constructed and stuff. So that one might be might be a good project. Probably wouldn't take too long either. Ah, uh, Kanan, Kanan Jarrus, one of my, one of my favorite Jedi. Almost, almost more favorite than Obi Wan, but doesn't quite make it. The Ben Solo saber is also really cool. It's got some, some features that look almost like the Leia saber, a little bit. Which would make sense. And then of course Ezra Bridger's two sabers. The Leia Organa saber's been done a bunch of times. And the Ray Skywalker saber. Alright. I think I might try to see if I can find a digital version of this ancient crossguard saber. Cause I feel like that's Well, on second thought, this particular saber doesn't really have any uh, much significance in the universe at large, so probably not going to be able to find a scanned reference from the book uh, online that I can use, so I probably need to do something that's a little bit more recognizable, something we can find. I guess making a Clone Wars set makes sense, so let's just go in alphabetical order and find the first Clone Wars one that I haven't done yet. Um, except for Ahsoka, because 
her sabers are unique and would not be compatible with the system. Um, so I'm guessing Sin Dralig, which, <laughs> which is Nick Gillard backwards, I just realized. Mm, your Star Wars name is, is your, your name backwards. This one should be a really quick build. Um, and then Depa Balaba should also be fairly quick. So let's see if we can do both of these. Why not? That'll be two Clone Wars sabers knocked off the list. All right. Here we go. There we go. Yep, that is the exact image uh, from from the book. So, so that works out pretty well. And the only other view of it doesn't really show us any other detail. It, it looks it looks very very similar to um, other sabers like this, um, with a couple of differences here and there. There, there is like a little bit on the back there. Let's, I'll go ahead and take a picture of, because the the one online didn't have the. Uh... Yeah, good enough. Okay. <laughs> that, that does seem a little bit excessive there bud I mean you do you 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 do what you want if you if you're being responsible then no worries okay it looks like it's rotated a little bit funny I'm getting closer. There we go. That's close enough. All right, so the main body, we need to be around, I think, 38 in order to. Um, in order for the connection system to work, I think. Let me check that again. So we need to go 16.1, 10 sides. And then if we're at 38, okay, yeah, that's 38 is about as close to comfort as I want to get. So. Not really feeling it yet. Well, your, your your constitution save is very good, my friend. All right. So, 
so yeah this should be pretty easy all right let's just go for it here Go like that. Go like that. That's really all I need there. Just revolve that. And then we'll make a rectangular pattern out of it. There we go. And then if I switch this to perspective, I think it'll be closer. And we'll, we'll keep it like that. There we go. And then we just need to create a cylinder on this plane up to, let's see, that was 37. So if we make it 35. this way and then 35 again just like that And then we need just slightly larger. There we go. There, that part was easy. Um, the fact that we lost, how much did we lose there? Down to 35 right there. That's kind of close, isn't it? Here, let's, um, let's look at it this way. Hmm. Yeah, so from there to there. Might be a little bit thin, but might be passable. Just out of curiosity, I'm gonna go in here and redraw that real quick. So from there to there, Point five. That's a little bit small. Um, I could go I could cheat a little bit and just go like ever so slightly larger on, on this inner part here by like half a millimeter and then be 0.75 on the smallest parts. Yeah, it's probably fine. Let's just go with it. 
Let's just go with it. Make a quick save. All right, so that's where the emitter is going to start. I'm thinking to make that, I want to make a, um, I want to make a straight cylinder, make another ring that goes around it, and then we're going to fill it over the top and around all the edges there. I think, I think that's going to work. We're going to find out. So let's create a new cylinder here. We'll go out to 38. And we'll just push it until we get to the end of this. Just like that. OK. And I want to make a ring right there. All right, so we're going to revolve that. And then I want to fill it this way and this way. Nope, we can go more. So like that, I guess. Or maybe, maybe when I actually want, maybe I need to do these edges first. Oh, it's going to expand it out. So I need to go smaller. Let's get a sketch dimension on this guy. Make it two. There we go. That looks way better. And then if I take this, go down one like that. There we go. Now that's the right shape. Huzzah. And then we should be able to use our emboss tool to make our rectangular cutout there. So let's see if we can make that happen. Just need to make sure that inside the lines. Make a mirror line. Mirror this and this. Across there. Get rid of that. There we go. Okay. Then offset both of these around 1.5. Okay, so now we got that shape. Create an emboss on that face. Selected faces are not connected. Selected faces are not connected. Mm 
I'm not sure what that means. Selected faces are not connected? Weird. Okay, well... No, let's just go like this. See if we can cut in. What the heck, man? Why are you doing this to me? Alright, turn that on. Go from this object, minus 0.5. Okay, well, it all lines up, so I guess that's what we want. Kind of has a weird, like, angle, though. Yeah, it's got that weird steep angle to it. I don't like that. Don't like that at all. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to try, try emboss one more time. Nope. It's just, it's just not going to do it. Okay. All right. Um, what if I did half of it at a time? So emboss this on that. Nope. Still not working. Okay. <sighs> All right. Well, when it's not working the way you want, just break it. <laughs> so I'm going to split the body so that I have this extra piece, right? And then I'm going to break it into a surface. And I want to grab this. No, not like that. Um, I want to go solid, go like that, wait, hang on, okay, I know what I'm doing, because um, I need to, right, 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 so I grab these two, push it through like that, cut, and actually I can just go ahead and make this longer so it cuts all the way through the edge get rid of that create thickness on both these pieces so I've got a solid body there and then And just take this and offset it the depth that I want of that and then extrude it to the end of that piece I mean cannot complete extrusion don't don't do that crap to me Now, now it's got those nice right angles facing out towards the, the face there, and everything is all nice and rejoined together. Easy. All right, we got a couple of those radio buttons. We've got a, a switch there. We've got the main body with the two big buttons, which we have from other, um, other sabers, and then kind of a unique pommel. So... 
So let's build this out real quick. We'll go ahead and do a, a rotate on this guy. So that's going to be 18, 19. Okay. So 19 by 100, 101. One that way, one point five that way. There we go, and then we'll just trim this out. Perfect. Okay. Yep, everything's looking good. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm going to map this out real quick just to get that out of the way. Start right about there. This one's got a bit of more of a gap on it. 16. Oh, yep, I think we'll finish this one tonight for sure. Um, but probably won't get to the second one that I want to do. But at least that gives me direction on, on where I want to go next time. Alright, so for this, we're just going to... I'm just gonna go visually, no specific, oop, no specific measurements on this. And then it looks like, looks like either a half round or maybe like straight and then round. So you know what, let's let's just go rectangular and then I'll just work out the, the fillet. Alright, so we can trim that out. Trim that out. That's all we need for that. There we go. We'll just grab this. We'll go like this. Looks pretty good. Oop, I missed something. There we go. I wonder why that wasn't connected. Click save. All right, now we just need to put some buttons and some other little details on this.
Okay, so... I'm gonna stick these on there. There's like another little one there. And then on the... Yeah, you over there, did you get activated? She made her activation noise, as Kristen called it. Brrr. The other picture that I took also shows like a long rectangle that spans like a good distance of this, but on the other side. <laughs> so I can probably, if I make these little sketches on, on angles, then, then they won't have like the weird steep parts, um, or I need to make this cylinder um, a surface and then just, you know, cut all these out uh, from, from where they're sitting. So that, that might actually be easier. Let's go ahead and turn this off, turn that off. We're going to split that part off. There we go. I feel like this is gonna be like way quicker and easier. Cause I can I can literally just visually plot these out exactly where they sit. And even though I'm extruding straight on, it'll cut them out exactly where I want them to. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. All right, so then on the flip side, there's one that goes, if I can just eyeball it, it's, oh wait, no, it's not quite on the back side. Hang on. So it's, Okay, so if this is where these are, then, yeah, so it's, so it's on the back side, but it's actually on the top side. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got to do it this way. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be helpful if I put the two big buttons on this before I go much farther. So I need to remember which, which of these models had the, I think, okay, uh, the Shock T had big wide buttons like, like these. So we should be able to import those. And then just plot, plot them on there so I can so I can see where that cutout is supposed to happen. Because it's, it's these right here in the, um, well, let's, let's just go ahead and grab them. Because I, I think in this one, it's, it doesn't look like they're as textured but then again, the ones in the book have not been super accurate. So I'm, it, it seems more likely that, that they, they would be derived from like what the other sabers were. So I'm just gonna grab both of these. Set the pivot. No, that's not what I want. Rotate first, I guess.
yeah see it's it's almost almost a perfect match as far as like spacing and stuff so i feel like it, it would be the same parts okay so then um for this i'm gonna have to turn it around here because the way i'm looking at it is that there's a rectangle about from about here ish and goes past the other button and it looks a little bit wider let's go with that There we go. Okay, yeah, that, that looks right. All right, cool. So then we just need to turn these guys off. Thicken this guy. And then grab this. Object, join. There we go. Is that too deep? How deep is that? One. All right, I need to offset faces 0.5, offset face. It's a couple extra steps, but in my head, this is this is easier than like sketching a new one and then pulling that all the way through and joining. If I can just offset the individual faces to make them shallower. Also gives me more control if I ever want to change it. Get the surface bodies out of the way. There we go. Hey, we're almost there. Good time to save. Okay. All right, uh, the cover tech clip, we're not gonna worry about. We didn't worry about it on other designs, so we're not gonna worry about it on this one. Um, we do, however, need the radio button things and this guy, so we can create um, this straight on and then just rotate it into position. And then for those, um, Uh, for those, we need to create a, a tangent plane and drill some holes through there and then build those up through it. Um, I don't remember if I made those separate on this or not. I did. Ooh, I could just grab those. I could just grab those, put them in position, and yeah, okay, cool. We're, oh, actually, you know what? Isn't that, the, that's the same thing, isn't it? It's almost the same thing. Like the pommel end is different, but, and the emitter end is different, but like this and this look almost exactly the same. I mean, you've got, you've got like some different stuff going on there. Um, you know, especially with, with the way this is right here, but this section right here, same exact thing as that. So 
I can grab all three of those buttons. Cool. So let's derive from the shock T lightsaber and we're gonna grab you, you, and you. We're just shopping for everything. And we're gonna see where it put it. Okay. All right, let's get these rotated into position first. Looks about right. Then we'll just bump them over. Okay. Looks a little bit closer on this one. Again, it's probably just a difference in the the way that this this was modeled as opposed to the um, As opposed to the other one, because the other one, I you know, I have a, a screen used um, reference. Rotate. We we can also resize these and stuff, so not even worried about it. Go a little bit further. Yeah, there-ish. Just need to scale it down. All right, so let's go 0 0.9, 0 0.8. Point 0.7. That looks closer. Let's rotate just a little bit further down, I think. All right, we need to turn off some stuff here. So I can see what the heck is going on. Oh, that's weird, isn't it? Damn it. Okay, that's a little bit more even now. And it looks a little bit better lined up. Okay. These probably need to scale down a little bit too. All right, let's see where we're at here. Not where I need to be. Let's pop this out. We're still in position. Angle looks good. All right, cool.
All right, I just need to cut out the space for these a little bit. I'm thinking Need to go up a little bit. There we go. Same thing there. Okay, so then I uh, just need to cut into the switch part. All right. Go this way, and then two sides will go one more inward like that. So then when this Grab this, go down one. Grab this, go down one. There, now they're set in there. That's what I wanted to see. Cool beans. All right, then this guy. I don't think I need to go the other way at all, so I'll just cut that out, put that back in its place, nice and flat. And there we go. There it is for the most part. Save that sucker. There we go. All right, now I just need to move some things around because I think this, 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 this. Move point to point. We're gonna go from here 
to here. And then this from here to here. Making sure all that snaps together nice and tight. All right. Let's cut into the end a little bit. for this a little bit just to give it a little bit of interest His saber. Oh, we should probably look at the colors and stuff. So let's go back to design. Let's open this up. Let's see what we're working with here. Okay, so bronze, aluminum, bronze. That's pretty much the whole deal. Okay. All right, so satin aluminum, I think, is on most of it already. Is the whole pommel bronze? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Really not much to the, the design on that part. Okay, his color. What was his color? His color is green and blue. It looks like green happens more often. He's got a secondary blue saber in some shots, but it looks like green is the primary color. So A strange color combination. The the bronze just looks weird to me for some reason. Okay, so there's more there's more bronze to it, and then there's a couple of black areas. So, got the book out and decided to look at that. Gives me a much better idea of what's going on. So under our appearances, we need applied to just these rings. Mm 
more prawns. Okay, so those go there, and then there was some black right in between these parts, and this little end dealy was black. There we go. There we go. Now that is technically accurate. Not a big fan of the design, but it works. Go ahead and cue this one up too. Oh man. Ugh. So that one was nice and quick. Um, really simple design on that one. The um, uh, Kane, Kane and Jarus is master. Um, I keep forgetting her name. Um, that one's got some interesting like curves and stuff in it. Um, so that one might be pretty cool. Um, we're, we'll make this, we'll see how many of the Clone Wars ones we can do and, and then make a, um, a prequels collection or maybe a Clone Wars collection. Um, I made the Geonosis collection, um, but maybe, maybe we can make like a, a big lightsaber collection like I did with Fallen Order. Fallen Order has 14 sabers in it. Uh, once once the collection is made, 14 lightsabers that you can that you get to download all at once. And I have been beside myself trying to figure out what in the heck kind of price I'm supposed to charge for that. Because um, you know each you know individual saber model it's like eight bucks. You know because I can sell it over and over and. And I want to try and keep it cheap, but I also only make 70% royalty on it. So 30% of the price is just gone. So I only make about $5 every time I sell one. Um, and and trying to like quantify what 14 sabers is is just is just crazy. Like if if I just did what I would consider the um, the fair value according to how much each saber technically costs. Uh, if you bought them individually, it's over a hundred dollar value. So if I took that, and and see this this is where I'm like, I don't know what the perception of value is on a collection of 3D models. You know, like so so if I did that. You'd, you'd still be like 90 something dollars now if, if I take if I take this and and I cut it in half if I do if I do like a fifty dollar price for 14 sabers then that is an insane value 
when you look at how much each saver costs individually. And and if I'm making that, you know, and if and if that value is also perceived by people that are looking for these 3D models and and wants to have that ultimate kit, then then may, maybe they would go for it, you know. And and if I charged 50, then I get $35 every time somebody buys every single 3D model in my collection, um, which are royalty free, which means they can print and sell the prints as kits and stuff if they want to, um, and, and you know, and make their own business of it if they wanted to. They just can't resell the model itself and they can't distribute the 3D model, but they can, but they can make physical prints and they can sell the prints if they wanted to. So, so part of me is, I'm really, I'm just, I'm just really undecided. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure what to do. Um, I could, I could try it at a higher price and then if nobody ever touches it and it just doesn't sell, then, then maybe I need to lower it, um, or something like that. Well, shortchanging myself is, is if, if it only sold once, those prices would be shortchanging myself. But the expectation is that over time, I can sell it three, four, a dozen times. And, you know, before I say, okay, I've been paid enough for this, I'll make them free. Because that, that was kind of the intent was, you know, once, once a particular model brings in enough uh, enough income where I've been paid for my time, then then I can start like you know releasing them out to the masses if I wanted to. I it's undecided. I don't know if I'm going to do that yet. Um, NFT. I don't know enough about it. Um, that is, it's that would be like a whole thing on its own of like figuring out how it works and stuff and. Um, I, I could see that for art, but for for a functional 3D model prop kind of thing, you know, the whole royalty-free files thing is, is really, like, kind of the more commonplace, I guess, um, strategy. <laughs> um, because because I, I want to capture the attention of people that have 3D printers but don't know how to model, and they want models. Yes, time is time is money. Um, but I, I can't I can't price it as as if it's only gonna sell once. I I can't. Um there's there's plenty of other models out there that do charge quite a bit, but they're also like incredibly detailed. Like this this took me we worked on this for what, an hour? Um and it's pretty much ready, and I think within another hour it would be packaged and ready for download so so if i look at two hours worth of work then then i should be getting paid around forty dollars you know so how do i get forty dollars of labor value out of this one file you know i don't know that i can it's it's you know but bundling it maybe i can get more value out of it i don't know yeah it's the the market for 3D models is so weird because because you do you have sellers that sell incredibly complex and and expensive models and then you have people that just give it away and and don't and don't charge anything and they they probably make most of their money on like commission because their 3D models are like their it's their content model you know um, modelers are making are making money off of uh, customer quests as opposed to just the models that they make. Okay. Sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Um, so, I don't know, it's, hey, where'd the cat go?
Oh, she went to go investigate, apparently. Um, so yeah, and, and then you and then you have guys that like have entire sets of armor. Like like a like you can get a dark a dark trooper armor, not dark trooper, a death trooper. You can get a death trooper armor set for ten dollars. Like his sales volume is probably insane, even though he's only making like seven dollars every time somebody buys it, but he probably sells it way more often than the guy who charges $50 for for the same armor set. Yeah. And and it's not and it's not just um and it's not just like market factors either. It's like you know, even in art, it's if you have a name, then you can charge more just because you have the name to stick on it. You know, if my username Degaba Ben was like you know if if i had a, a big fan base and a patreon and stuff like like i've seen i've seen some guys um on replica prop forum they'll they'll post 3d models and they'll go yeah it's on my patreon and so you have to go and you have to subscribe to the patreon to get the model and i had thought about that um that for a while like you know if if i set up a patreon for 3d models and and if i could put out one 3d model a month and and people are kicking in five bucks to to the patreon to get a, a model a month you know if i've got 20 people all wanting that you know all having access to that model i get 100 bucks a month minus fees even if they don't want that if they don't want to print that models you know <laughs> um but i i mean that comes with its own challenges because consistency is my biggest challenge for years. Consistency has been my biggest challenge of being able to, to actually commit to a content creation platform. I feel like if, if I was on Patreon and I actually had patrons, I would, I would fall into that. Like I'm obligated. And so I have to work on this. So I have to find time to, to crank this out or I have to find time to make a survey post to figure out, you know, what do my patrons want me to model next and, and stuff like that, you know, um, and, and, and figure out like what those content levels are and what that's worth and stuff. I've already put so much time in trying to, you know, put this out there to the CG trader, you know, I, I guess they could coexist, right? I could, I could have the CG trader at higher price points, or if you're on the Patreon, and you subscribe, you get access to to a whole bunch of files, right? Like, I I, I guess I'd have I'm gonna have to go find that guy's post and see how he delivers the 3D models to his patrons. I don't know if you can like if you can like package a file and just like put it on Patreon because if I can do that and Patreon hosts the files, that'd be amazing. If I have to host the files on like Dropbox or Google Drive or something like that, you know, eventually I'm going to run into a position where I run out of storage, cloud storage space, you know, or, or maybe I make like a coupon code for CG Trader or, or something like that where they can just like go on and, and grab that model off of CG Trader and use the coupon code or something like that. I don't know. Um, so many things, so many things, so many possibilities. Um, I don't even know what the demand for this kind of stuff would be to, to even gain an audience. I think that was the experiment with TikTok was figuring out, you know, is there an audience for this? Would people be interested in, in you know, it, would it translate from TikTok audience to Patreon audience and how, how could I kind of funnel that? Um, because Twitch isn't going to help me grow an audience. Um, YouTube is barely going to help me grow an audience just based on like search tags and stuff. Um, CG Trader has great traffic, but but it, but it's you know it's not for content. It's people just you know looking for the models. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, see that 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 all comes back to having an audience though. If I had the audience to tell me, hey, we really want this unique design you know, and then I do it and it makes the patrons happy. Um, 
you know, I, I have to have that audience in order to go there. Like the, 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 the advice that I've seen every time is don't start a Patreon unless you already have an audience. And, and right now the, the YouTube channel doesn't have an audience. It's got like three subscribers, <laughs> you know, um, the, the Twitch channel has barely got any follows. There's, there's really nothing there. And I can't, you know, you don't, can't grow a following on Twitch. I have to grow the following somewhere else. And TikTok was the place to do it, but I fell off the wagon as far as like, you know, generating video content. It's so, uh, I mean, I don't have an agreement with Twitch. So, so maybe something I can do is like go TikTok live at the same time that I'm doing this live, like set up a little thing with my phone and go TikTok live on my phone just where people can see my face and has like, you know, like, Hey, with it, with a, some text that's like, Hey, go to Twitch. So you can, so you can see me work and see what I'm doing. You know, maybe, maybe that, maybe that's a way to funnel them in or something. I don't know. Cause it, it just, it feels like this, this project is just starting from scratch as far as like, you know, getting people's attention, being on CG trader gives me a marketplace so I can just play with SEO and and their traffic and and let let them have their 30% royalty while while I just provide models and and try to up my my search ranking by by becoming you know by buying into their well not buying but by getting into their um their points program where like I earn a point every time somebody likes a model I earn a point every time somebody like favorites one or something like there's two different ways to like a model i guess um when somebody purchases a model that's 20 points um when i upload a tutorial that's 20 points um their tutorials on fusion 360 are non-existent um like i i could i could make and upload tutorials to to cg trader and and it's not even like I have to write up a whole bunch of instructions or something. I looked at some of the tutorials in CG Trader, and it's literally just a YouTube embed. It's just a YouTube video that somebody's already produced as, as a uh, as a tutorial, and when they upload it to CG Trader, they get 20 points. And the more points I get, the higher my royalty rate. So, like, the highest royalty rate I think I can get is 80%, um, which is way better than 70%. Um, but, you know, modelers that have that many points also get much higher search results you know so it's it's all it's it's got so many layers and it's so complicated and i have so many other projects that i'm trying to work on that it's like if i wanted to do this i feel like i would have to do just this you know i'd have to give up podcasts i'd have to give up um you know I, i'd have i'd have to like slow down on on etsy stuff like, like it, this would be the thing because i'd have to spend that much time on it i feel like like I, I don't right now it's just a little side hustle doing the doing the live videos and stuff maybe i can add tiktok live to the to the places that i'm trying to push this out maybe that'll help and that doesn't take a whole lot of effort on my part other than just you know setting up my phone with like a little thing so so that it's looking at me while while i'm streaming and um and do it that way so anyway it's getting late and i'm i'm gonna end the stream for tonight we we created we worked on the godzilla saber i got this lightsaber mostly done i feel like that's a pretty good achievement we're going to continue our our journey through the clone war sabers starting next week for sure so i appreciate anybody that's watching Thank you for tuning in and hanging out with me. I'll see you on the next stream.